Hi there, Dead Eye Del Boy here, back with another video, and in this one, we're going to show you again some little hidden unknown features about Gran Turismo 7 that you might just find useful. And you never know, it might just help you get a little bit faster on track. But before we get into that, if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new here or if you've returned to the channel and have still yet to hit that subscribe button, it would be really, really very much appreciated and it could help us get one step closer to the 10,000 subscriber dream that we are trying to achieve. Now, let's jump into Gran Turismo 7 and see exactly what I'm talking about. So, standard menu into the world map and where are we going to go today? We're going to go up to the little Gran Turismo icon at the top left of the screen. Now, you will all know about that. You've got the range of options here. My page, which is all your information that you could ever dream about, about your own stats. Although, if they could just give us a number there to let us know our actual DR, that would be very much appreciated along with a number here to let us know our safety rating again that would be very much appreciated pd if you're watching please do it you've then got the dashboard section which has got lots of useful information particularly if you're trying to collect all the cars and complete the full game i'm sure a lot of you have done a lot more in this part than i have the options section you can do all the things you need to do with the game volume settings controllers all of that kind of thing Next up is the online manual. Again, you're probably all aware of that. How many of you have actually went into it? I'm not sure. Probably not as many as you would think. But basically, this is Google for Gran Turismo 7. If you're not sure about something in the game, if you come in here, you'll probably find the answer to it. And yeah, it might save you actually Googling it. But lastly, the section I actually really want to feature, and that is beyond the apex. Now I did a quick straw poll in my last live stream and I can safely say around 95% if not more knew this was there or hadn't noticed it but hadn't bothered ever going into it. So this is a good opportunity to see exactly what is in there. So once we're in here you can see over here on the left hand side you've got the contents, advice for beginners, driving techniques and manners, mechanics, car settings, photographing cars. Now, a lot of that you might never need to know anything about. However, there are a few little hidden gems in there which I'd like to draw your attention to. So it actually explains to you how to work out the width of your car so you know where you are on track at all times. Now that could save you from hitting other drivers, getting up onto the kerbs, onto the grass when you weren't expecting it, just basically have a better understanding overall about the space that your car needs and the space you can give other drivers on the track. You can see here that it explains to use chase view to go over to the edge of the track, then switch over into cockpit view and you'll see what the view looks like when you're at the edge of the track and again when you check the normal view for a lot of people which is the bumper cam or axle cam and you'll be able to see exactly where you are on track and that as i said could be such a key difference to the way you drive next if we go down to this section using driver assistance this actually explains to you what each and every one of the assists that are available to you on track can do to help your car now you might not use any assists but you might use them all and you might actually wonder exactly how they are helping you well, this explains it because it tells you about the traction control, how it works. It explains counter steering assistance, which I know a lot of people have questions about. And you've got the anti-lock brakes, self-explanatory. But then you've got the active stability management. Again, a lot of people think they know what this does, but here it is in black and white and it'll tell you exactly what it does. Next up, you've got the driving techniques and manners section. Now, this is a particularly useful section to have a read at, and I found myself actually spending a bit of time on this one because it answered a lot of the questions that I had asked myself and never really found the answers to. Now, one of the questions I had was, am I sitting in the correct or most optimum position on the seat when driving the car? Because I sometimes wonder, am I sitting too far away, too close? Where's the optimum? What is the actual optimum position? Well, this is answered in this section. Now, one of the questions I've had for a long time was, 
What is the optimum position to be sitting in when you're playing Gran Turismo? How far or how close to the steering wheel should you really be? Well, the answer's in here. This section, driving position for sensing the car, it explains it all in great detail and even gives you a little handy diagram showing you the optimum seating position for when you're driving. And the last section I'll focus on in here is simply on the racing etiquette. Now, you might have heard people talking about things like defending positions on the track, you can only move once, all that kind of thing, but have you ever actually seen it written down anywhere to say that is the rule? Well, it is. It's written down in here. So the race etiquette section is very useful indeed, and if you want to be a better driver and a better person to race against, then this section is really important. It basically emphasises things that you might take for granted, things like, well, don't drive off the track, don't block other cars when returning to the track, again, make a safe rejoin, smoothly yielding the racing line, basically telling you if there's a faster car coming up behind you, how to let it pass safely and smoothly and maintain the optimum speed to get the best finishing time that you can possibly get. And here it is written in black and white that you can only change course to defend your position once. It's there, it is a rule, it's not some myth, it is something that should be observed on track. I'm not saying it is, and I'm not saying people will, but you do have a legitimate complaint if somebody does this to you, constantly changes lane to stop you trying to get past, blocking, weaving, all that kind of thing, you do have a legitimate grievance to tell them to stop in the post-race lobby because it's not on. And as if it needed to be written down in black and white, it is. Running other cars off the track is forbidden, so please, if you're a dirty driver, have a read at this. Maybe process it, go back out on track and be a reformed character. But then again, we all know that isn't going to happen. At the moment, Gran Turismo 7 is very much about tuning and setting up cars. The sport mode races have setups in the races every other week at the moment. And in here, you'll get a better understanding of all the different car settings. It might just help you tune your car and give you the competitive advantage on your opponents that you might not have had before. But maybe your passion is for photographing those beautiful machines out on track or in different scapes. Well, this section will help you maybe understand things you didn't really know about when it comes to taking pictures of the cars. There's a little section there for you. Fill your boots. Enjoy. And if you found this video at all helpful or useful, then let me know in the comments what you think. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all on the next one. Goodbye.